Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the Keepers, Keepers of, of the books. books, your online librarians. So today we have a lot of books, um, nonfiction. So this whole episode will be nonfiction. Most of these are review books, but not quite all of them. And our first one is Marvel Doodles. So this is for all the artists with, and ones who wish they were artists. So this takes you through how the illustration should look and then gives you a chance to create your own version of it. And you'll find that there are some really funny texts throughout the book as well. Like on the cover it said, oh, smash your puny doodles from Hulk. And this one is little Ant-Man. It says, look how tiny Ant-Man is. Draw lots of tiny ants to keep him company. How many can you draw? So it has a few challenges throughout, but you can always just draw however you want. So for all you Marvel fans, check out Marvel Doodles. This was a review book from Marvel, of course. And this one's a great present for about ages, oh, second grade through eighth or ninth grade, depending on who the child, where the child is and what they like with Marvel. Our next one is a set of four books from Norwood House, and these are review books. They are called the Matters of Opinion series. They gave us cell phones, obesity, school violence and bullying to look through. What I really like about these is the format. They are perfect to put in a middle school library. They start by presenting a timeline of the issue and then they move into presenting the issue itself. And for each section they present, they have this examine the opinions and they go into one area you should look at in what they just presented in the argument. So they present both sides of the issue and they tell you how to examine and analyze that issue. And then they send, they give you the positives and the negatives of the issue. They give you why should it be criminal? So this one, they tell you yes it should, and they also tell you no it should not, and why and the opinions on those. And in the end, what I really, really love is this wrap it up section. This wrap it up section helps you to write an essay on the topic. It helps you choose the topic, it helps you to research it, and choosing your theme. And it also presents you with um, some ideas for body paragraphs on the essay and a conclusion in reviewing your, your work. In the end, they have uh, notes and a glossary as well as some additional resources that you can use. So this is a fantastic book for research on opinion papers, which is a huge part of the curriculum for language arts in middle school. Our next book is Guide to Mastering Middle School from the characters of Girl Meets World. So this is told through a journal format on everything you need to survive middle school, from friends to how to handle teachers, bullying, and it's a great guide for anyone who's in middle school or going into middle school. Great present as well. This is a review book from Disney Press. And it features Girls Meet World. Girl Meets World, Riley and Maya. So two characters that they know and love already. Our next one is Tech Bytes. And this is a review set from Norwood House. And they gave us four of them again. 3D printing, wearable ro robots, which that one was so cool. I'll tell you about that one. Self-driving car, which is a huge thing right now with Tesla and Google. Artificial eyes. Okay, so artificial eyes tells you all about the history of artificial eyes. And it starts back in, what is it, 16th century? And these golden eyes they found from way before then. And this talks about the history and the evolving technology behind them and how they're designed. And it's kind of cool and kind of a little bit gross, but amazing. And it tells you about how they paint them and how they're working on bionic eyes. And in the back, these all follow the same format. So they have a great layout for upper elementary and middle school. It tells you how they could grow eyes from stem cells now, and they're doing that for tadpoles. There's a glossary, there's further information uh, for research, books and websites, and an index. Wearable robots is bionic robot suits. So think like Iron Man, and um, there's these exoskeletons that people can put on to lift more or to gain use of limbs that they haven't been able to use. And it's just really, really a cool topic, especially when it gets into how they use them with vets and the military. Self-driving car, I think is pretty obvious and it does talk about the origin origins of the idea with Disney 
and why people are interested in self-driving cars and how they've evolved and self-parking cars, automatic cruise control, just the whole history there and where we're going with this. And I think that'll be really kind of interesting with the technology right now for some classes. 3D printing, of course, is huge because of maker bots or maker spaces. And this talks about how they can 3D print clothes and not just the stuff you're printing in your library class, but cars and human body parts, human tissue which is really pretty new and how they use them in dentistry. It also talks about some controversial things too, like should people be able to 3D print guns? Would anybody, just anybody be able to do that? And some of the new laws behind all of these issues. And so that's a fantastic series with wonderful layout and resources for middle school and lower elementary. The next one is The Chew, An Essential Guide to Cooking and Entertaining. So this is a great guide for all sorts of stuff from the people on the chew. So it gives you a very detailed recipe, makes it real easy to use, and even adds a few tidbits from the show that keep you laughing your while well, you read. I like this one because it's very simple to follow, doesn't take a lot of effort, and it's a well-rounded guide for entertaining as well as cooking. And this is a review book from Kingswell Press. And there's another one that goes with it. The Chew Approved. The most popular recipes from the show. Another one that's also a review book. If you like the show, The Chew, you'll love these recipes, but even if you've never watched the show, they pick some great favorites that taste delicious, have easy to follow recipes, and even give you some tips on how to better prepare the items. Like to cook, you'll definitely wanna check out these two books. Okay, my next one is Disney A to Z, the official encyclopedia, fifth edition. It's been updated, it's by Dave Smith, and he's the chief archivist at Walt Disney Archives. So this one is an A to Z Disney guide. This is for your Disney fan or libraries. My students are already checking this one out because we put one in there. Well, let's just say it's very comprehensive. I do not know who all these actors are, but apparently Disney does. It has every character, every show, every actor at least your main ones it has the different locations the different worlds the different rides it is everything disney so if you have a disney fanatic this is a fantastic present and that's a review one again from disney editions the art of disney's dragons so this is a huge hit at my library and the i'll tell you why because the illustrations in it are absolutely amazing. We kind of have a little bit of history of dragons in them in a forward, but it also tells you about the Disney dragons and how they played a part in all the episodes. I like how you can tell kind of what they looked like before they hit film. And then you get to see what they look like after. And it's amazing how much of a difference between the original drawing and how they appeared on film. And it gets all into all sorts of details about that. So if you have a dragon fan or a Disney fan in the house, you'll want to get this one for them. And that one has Elliot in it from the 2016 Pete's Dragon. You are going to notice a huge uptake in dragon stuff. Dragons are going to be a huge trend, not only for the end of 2016, but into 2017 as well. So you're going to want to um, get this not only for your dragon fanatics and for your Disney fanatics, but for the people who are going to find out that they love dragons. There's some exciting books coming out about that one we're gonna tell you about. Uh, I can't wait till the new Brandon Mole one comes out in March, so that's a dragon one as well. The Art of Minnie Mouse. This is another review book from Disney, and this one shows art quotes. It's just a beautiful coffee table book for people who love Minnie. Minnie is different villains, I love that one. So it tells you what medium it is, who the artist is, just some really, really adorable art with Minnie Mouse. And in middle school, it's a huge hit. I'm sure it will be in elementary and high school as well because with your budding artists, they're gonna want to study some different takes on a classic. I think that one's interesting because over the years, Minnie's changed a lot and it definitely does a good job showcasing that. Walt Disney Silly Symphonies. So this actually was a TV show back in the early days of Disney. It also goes into a little bit of the history of the classic cartoons from Silly Symphonies. They were short cartoons that featured a lot of the characters that have still stayed around to this day. You'll see it has 
information about it, who directed it, who the characters were, and then it includes an illustration from the actual show. This was one of my favorite series to check out on VHS from the movie store, and a lot of you will probably remember these from Saturday Morning Cartoons. This is a lot of the origins for things like Fantasia. You'll recognize a lot of the filmography. I think everybody will know this picture who has seen Silly Symphonies and the Bones. This one, remember the little pig singing Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf? This one is awesome for Disney history. All right, our next book is Maps of the Disney Parks. And this one covers the maps from the very inception of Disney through all their parks over the years. And it was really fun to look at this book and to see the maps from the different times that I've been to Disneyland. And you can see both maps of the whole park and maps of just different lands. And in it, here is one of the entire park. That one is Tokyo. And it follows the entire concept that Walt has had throughout all of this, the different islands. It was really fun for me to see the two maps from the early 80s, 1986, and to see where they showed the first 3D movie, which I saw, which had Michael Jackson in it. That was fun. And then the next time back with Indiana Jones and where they have the new ride in the map. So that was fun and it, that was a really good book and it's really fun just going back for nostalgia, the concept behind planning the parks and how they put them all together. There's the Walt Disney Studios, a lot to remember. This is more on how the films are made and I like this one because it has maps of what Walt Disney Studios looked like as well as photos and other primary source documents to help shape your experience of what it was like to be in the Walt Disney Studios. It includes history as well as some of the amazing things that they accomplished there. So if you like Walt Disney, you'll love the Walt Disney Studios a lot to remember. And look, there's really cute little puppies on the back. Oh, cute. I don't know, I just want to hug the little puppy. Those are the ones that they used to animate 101 Dalmatians. This one is called the Enlighten How Enlightenment Changes Your Brain. This is an original book from Andrew Newberg and Wa Mark Waldman. And this is really cool because it shows brain scans specifically on how different types of enlightenment processes changes in the brain, like prayer, meditation, some of those. And it's kind of just a fun way to experience how you retrain your brain. So even if you're not necessarily into enlightenment, you might appreciate the, how the brain works and how they have developed a few new things related to the brain from their different experiments. This one, You Are the Placebo, does show brain scans as well. It's from Joe Dispenza. So is it possible to heal your brain through thoughts? Heal yourself through thoughts? Well, in this book, they have developed different experiments to test that very hypothesis. And so they show you here how the brain is affected by your standard brain and then also how enlightenment changes it. And I won't spoil the how they, they come up with the reason why thought does help you to heal. But this is a must have for anyone who's into neuroscience or enlightenment or are interested in how thinking can change the outcome for cancer patients who think positive versus those who don't when they receive the same treatment. All right, so those are our nonfiction books and there are a lot more out right now. So in the comments below, just put if there's any nonfiction books that you've been particularly impressed by lately. And up above somewhere in here, you'll find our icon. Please hit that to subscribe. Hit like if you like this video and please share it with your friends. Until next time, happy reading. Bye. Bye.